Are we ready, guys? Okay. Welcome to Liquid Lunch. We're coming at you live. It's uh, December 11th. It's our second last show. Tomorrow's the uh, the Stargate opens, Sandra. I know. I know. Tomorrow is 12, 12, 12. I know. How cool is that? It's going to be a Stargate open. I know. Wow. What's going to happen? We may not be here after tomorrow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so take advantage of the last 24 hours. Well, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, then it'll happen on the 21st, right? Yeah. So then we may have a 10-day countdown. Right? Yeah, we might. We just might. Yeah, actually, you know what? We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. We are? With, yeah, because uh, uh, Aerostar and uh, Lisa Francis, uh, they're, they're actually doing a big concert uh, or some event. We're going to find out what it is, but on the 21st. Oh, right? wow. And maybe on the 12th, too. Right? I can't. Anyway, we're going to get the details. So they know all about this stuff. Wow. Right? Okay. So, so we'll we're going to find out. Uh, we better. T we we got a really busy show. Let's let's say who else it's is so, coming on the so show. It's so busy, Hugh, that you can't even talk fast enough to keep it up. I know. Okay, <laughs> we have uh, Christina Roman here from the uh, Rosewood Estate. She brought some cheese, some uh, uh, chocolates, and some mead. What it's is that? Mead, honey wine. Oh yeah, that, See? that's. Yeah, I was talking to her about that honey wine. I've never heard of that. And you said you couldn't drink it because you're vegan, right? Yes. Except yes. I said that the honey actually comes from the plants. You should be able to eat it. Yes, but the whole idea of veganism is you you don't do you don't take anything away from some. You're saying else. you're exploiting the bees. Yes, thank the you. The bees are happy to gather that honey. <laughs> have you asked them? Have they signed a contract? <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? There's a movement now for uh, people in the city to keep bees, urban well, beekeepers. Well, I know. You know what? Speaking of December 21st and yeah. all that do to do to stuff, um, you know bees are interdimensional interdimensional creatures. Did you know that? I didn't until now. I knew they can Kathy go from were. this dimension to the next dimension. They're already in the next dimension. Really? Yes. Yes, they are. Oh, how do you know and what does that mean for us? That's why a lot of them are disappearing because they're going to the next dimension. Oh. It's true. It's a whole new, uh, it's not that little mite <laughs> that they've been blaming, the little well, Verona that's mite. Just, that's just so we can understand it because it's too big for our brains. They're really going to the other dimension. Yes, they are. Mm. They're well, preparing it for us. Who's going to pollinate our plants? Well, we have to go there. That's the whole point. <laughs> They're preparing it for us. Okay. All right. Well, oh, huge. we're going to find out. Well, we'll see what Errol and Lisa say about that later. Okay. Also, yes, Errol and uh, Lisa will be here. <laughs> Max Brand is here. Uh, we have Val. amazing artists today. Oh, my Absolutely. God. Absolutely. It's they very were musical. Fantastic. Val Shearman is coming. The Superstars Contest. Uh, also, Mark Rock 33 will be here another uh, performer and Sean, wow. Sean Dalton to kind of wrap up the uh, Sean's the always course. controversial so now our first guest is uh, Pete Eastmuir and Wendy Somerville and Jim uh, Doris are here and in fact Pete's going to perform for us right now awesome. and then we're going to come back and uh, chat with these guys about a new song they've done home for Christmas Eve and uh, so let's uh, hear Pete right now we'll come back and chat with these guys as like when lunch gets underway on a Tuesday we'll be right back a very cold Tuesday so uh, nice to be back here in uh, that channel. Looks like you've done some decorating, Hugh. It's uh, looking very posh here now. Uh, this is a song called It's Only Winter, and it goes like this, off the latest record. Falling on the ground It seems like winter's coming on And all the trees they've lost their clothes As we bundle against the cold And love was in the air in May in August, there was sunny weather 
October was a time for change It seems like winter's here again Wasting life, wasting time Yeah, it's just some words we hide behind and we're on the edge, but don't despair Cause it's only winter in the air sorrows joy is found and under blankets of snow fertile ground and when I see leaves on the ground I see the way love goes around and wasting life wasting time it's just some words we hide behind And we're on the edge but don't despair Cause it's only winter It's only winter It's only winter in the air Yeah, it's only winter it's only winter, it's only winter in the end. Thank you very much. And that was, a, that was a great song by... Uh, you know what? It's so funny because that song is so appropriate. Because on my way here today, I thought, it really feels like winter today. You know what? When I left the house this morning... It smelled like winter. And you biked. And I biked. Yeah. That's just crazy. But, uh, you know, it's not too bad. It's it not is, snowing. It is, it, no, but it does feel like winter It today. smelled it really like winter. Winter is in the air, like yeah. the song says. Yeah. It's so, amazing. Okay, great song. Well, we got Pete here joining us here at the table. Pete, great to have you hey, back on the show. Great to see you again, Hugh. And you brought a couple it's of friends. Sandra? Yeah, this lovely songwriting team here, Wendy Jim Somerville, and Wendy. Jim Doris, yeah? who I was fortunate enough to, to work with. They chose me to sing their song that they've been uh, wow. percolating now for you guys, a few years. Okay, well, let's find out. Now, you guys have been writing songs uh, for a while. I got a picture here, right? I don't know if this will show <laughs> before up. Before and after. That's before a, my uh, beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Beard. So that looks like, like Burt Bacharach. Yeah, exactly. And, and Hal David. There you go. Only the female version. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yes. exactly. Um, so wow. you guys have been writing songs for a long time. Yes. But uh, this is... This, this is the first recorded one. Really? Yep. So what happened to all those other songs that you wrote over the years? I know they were some of the greatest hits of the 70s <laughs> and 80s. <laughs> they were. They were. We won the occasional contest. Uh -huh. But uh, really, I mean, we've been working away, plugging away, doing songs that we We have another would. life, too. Yes. Oh, like this raising kids yes, and working. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. five kids. Yes. Oh, yes. OK. So that does take time. Well, that's where you got your songwriting material, right? <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So 40 years goes by pretty quick when you're, when you're raising yes. five kids. Yes, it does. Okay. So this song, we, as you said, wrote about 10 years ago. This is your sixth ago. child. <laughs> yes, right. Because they say songwriting is like, is like a child. It's like yeah. giving birth. Right. Right. Would you say that? It's a painstaking process. It is. It is. <laughs> And it's called Home for Christmas Eve. What's the, what's the story of this song? How did you come to write it and get involved with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Good story. Well, well, we were at a workshop and uh, Dan, Hill, yeah, and okay. Dan Hill was there. And, you know, you put your stuff in a bucket and they chose our song and talked about it. And he said, you... That had promise but needed clarification as to who is the, the singer. Uh, we, we, well, the original demo, we had a woman singing, and basically through the conversation, we came to the conclusion that it would be more appropriate for a male voice. 
okay. which led us to uh, get Mr. Eastmuir here to assist. Okay, so before we get into that and how you hooked up with Pete, I'm just curious. So what what did you put into this bin that Dan Hill picked up? Was it a CD or yep, a yep, CD. CD? And so he listened to it. So oh, it was yeah. an actual. Right. Yes, and it was he had the, words the lyrics and there. Right. Yes. Okay. And he just felt that he wasn't sure who the song was addressed to. When I, I wrote the I write the lyrics, Jim does the music, and uh, it was more like the soldiers because it said, "Would you be home for Christmas Eve?" And I know you're out there somewhere looking for the light was the original bridge and um, it just kind of didn't go anywhere so we changed the focus and this is a I guess would you say Pete uh, cheerier song yeah it's, it's a very of. moving song uh, Jim and, and uh, Wendy had been out to a couple of my gigs um, they heard me sing and they they liked my voice they they wanted somebody mm -hmm. with a little bit more character the, the other person who did the song was an opera singer Oh, wow. Did it beautiful, but it was like like straight ahead, crystal clear. But it didn't really uh, take get into the soul of it, if I can right. say mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then Jim and Wendy came over to my house, and Jim played the piano, and Wendy, I'd never heard the song before. <laughs> Wendy sang with me, and I did a duet with her immediately. Wendy's wow. got a beautiful voice, <laughs> by the way, really. Okay. And so Thank I did this duet, and I loved the song immediately. And I don't really take to uh, songs, uh, Ray. And I s and they asked me if I wanted to do it. And they had Todd Booth, a Juno Award-winning producer, produce it. And their son, Jamie Somerville, is a Juno Award-winning conductor of the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra. Wow. And okay. the first French horn player for the Boston Symphony. So the, the recording was turned out amazing with these people and, and the red people they gathered together. So I was honored to be part of this. It's unbelievable. Thank well, you. how did you guys come to be at Pete's show in the first yeah. place? Oh, I'm famous, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm very sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I didn't pay them we to go there. Oh. Yes, we heard good things. <laughs> so okay. you, went, you went to see him specifically with that in mind then? Is that just to see him. Yeah, okay. Just okay. See him. Okay. Then okay, so basically you were there. auditioning him without him even knowing. <laughs> so that's yeah. your son is the conductor of the Hamilton yes. Philharmonic? And wow. played French horn in Boston, so he's... Back and forth? Yeah, yeah, crazy. Wow, so there's definitely musical roots in your family. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Yeah. Now, uh, so, and, and you guys are saying this is the first time, even though you've been writing songs for a while, that, mm -hmm. that it's actually been recorded. Yes. This is and our winter holiday. Yeah. This year. But, <laughs> a, and uh, I'm just curious, like, uh, do you, are you, do you think this is going to become a big, you know, a classic Christmas song? I hope so. Because it's interesting, you know, what, there's a lot of people, it's just interesting to see what becomes a mm -hmm. classic mm -hmm. right. song and it, it, that can stand the test of time that people keep coming back to. <coughs> I think it will be. I think, I think it is a classic song and it, it hits people when, as soon as they hear it. And uh, there's been some talk. I, I haven't actually told these guys yet, but uh, one of my <laughs> friends knows retired Brigadier General, I forget his, his last name. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> but they're trying to get a whole bunch of these things shipped over to the troops and wow, it's already on nice. iTunes and it's getting hits and they've made a video so uh, you guys have made a video as well yeah just a, a simple video just to get it out there and um, you know it's it's it, it, it really affects people and I think it's it's so well recorded it was done at Revolution Studios and uh, you know, it was mastered by uh, and it Cardano. features a string quartet, so yeah. it's a little different wow. sound. Yeah. So more it's very classical. traditional. It's very a, it's traditional. Have you tried getting some radio play at this time oh of year? Oh, yes. And how's that going? It's slow. We don't know. I mean, this is waiting for the shoe to drop for somebody to say, I heard that today. Okay. We got an occasional but I do we got have one from The day Pittsburgh. we were saying, we haven't it's heard a, a thing. I mailed them out to the states. <coughs> to I just went along and picked out stuff off Google and mailed them out. And... Uh, got this, if I may read this yeah, to you, for sure. um, this is from a um, DJ in Pittsburgh, and uh, he said, thanks for sending me your CD, I can't really make the call on what to play m on my show, I passed it on to our program director and told him what I thought, that this is a very touching sh song that has such substance. I know from being on this earth that there are no coincidences or accidents. God orchestrates everything, and there was definitely a reason why you sent this CD to me. I had an extraordinarily difficult year, but through all of it, 
saw the hand of God working to his good and purpose. Thank you. I will keep this CD and it will bring warmth to me always. Wow. From a That's DJ in Pittsburgh. That's so really nice. Wow. Wasn't that, I mean, it really was. Yeah. I just, uh, just wow, to, that's beautiful. Just to take the time to say this. And who knows, you might get some airplay there. Well, exactly. Well, that's why in the States I thought there's more, you know, the troop thing. And, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. See, they should let the DJs pick the songs. That's, that's the problem. Right. Now yeah. it's all the accounting guys that pick them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a formula, right? There's yeah. a specific yeah. formula they go for. Okay, guys, well, we're uh, quite pumped to, to hear the song. Um, just any final thoughts? Uh, uh, about what you're going to be doing in the new year? Or, Are uh, you guys going to continue writing more songs? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. We can't stop. Yeah, okay. Is it going to take another 40 years to get no, another no, one? No, no, <laughs> It's also become part of my set for this time of year. Okay. Uh, so I play it. Jim's been helping me on the piano part. He taught me the piano part, so I, I play piano on it. And he does uh, a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we do our best, and, and I think it's a long-term thing. Like, it's going to yeah. be around for a while. So yeah. uh, we should have these two on the show next year you'll see where, where it goes <laughs> okay. we'll be Do celebrating all. Christmas in the next dimension in the next dimension oh, that's yeah. right we that's got right. it <laughs> I hope the if music the world doesn't end on the 21st yeah you know it's if it does that means something else is starting up right that's true yeah let's if I so. can lead one world this, ends another world uh, <laughs> opens right let's hope so Pete I hope so. Um, okay, so now, do you have any uh, gigs coming up where people uh, might be able to see you perform um, this song? Yeah, I'm, we're doing my partner and I, Marie, with the Well Digger Band, which my band is. Uh, the next one is a house concert in Rockwood, Ontario, uh, at Hugh in the Wood. Uh, it's right on the main drag of Rockwood, and um, I ah. just started re uh, recording last week my new EP, which extended play, uh, with the Heavyweights Brass Band. So uh, that'll be a release in February. Oh, that's great. We've had them in here too. Yeah, they're great, eh? Yeah. And it's produced by Rob Tian of the the heavyweights. Oh, he's yeah. a sousaphone player and he's with the Lemon Bucket Orchestra, so it's a pretty Lemon cool, Bucket funky Orchestra. yeah. And Pete, yeah. what's your website if people want to get it? Um, Myspace.com slash Peter Eastmuir. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Wendy and Jim, um, how they can people can get their hands on the song? Well on YouTube or on iTunes. So, so if they home go on YouTube, Chris, home for Christmas Eve. Home for Christmas Eve. That's the name of the song. They yep. can find out on YouTube or iTunes, and they right. can order a copy sure, there too. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a website? Oops, no. For your stuff? Okay. Not yet. They can get it also through my website as well. Oh, okay, I great. So that's myspace.com/slash Peter Eastmuir, right? Yeah. Okay, can I guys. give one more compliment to Peter before you go? Absolutely. I mean, before. Yeah. It's that. It's just from somebody who heard of the MP3. Pete Eastmuir's voice is perfect, so poignant, and he'd evoke for me a soldier in fatigue sitting outside his barracks on a crate, penning a letter to his mother while tears run down his cheeks. You can hear the yearning and the need to be safely with his family, both in the music and the words. Wow. So that was pretty nice. That's yeah. really, yeah. that says a Who's lot that about the song. From a friend of mine. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, we're looking Who's forward to hearing the song now. Hearing them for years. <laughs> okay. Well, we look forward to it. Here it Thank is. You. Home for Christmas <laughs> Eve. That's what the CD looks like. And uh, thanks, guys, for coming on the Thank show. You today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you for the interview. Good luck. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll be right back. Christmas Day with the old familiar songs Home for Christmas Home for Christmas Eve Miracles can happen If you just I know you're waiting with love so strong and true. Come this Christmas, I'll be home with you. Home for Christmas. 
I'll hold your hand. We'll watch the candles go while the distant church bell chimes. We'll run outside, make angels in the snow, recalling happy times. Okay, so we're back here on the show after that uh, fabulous Christmas song. What a song. nice, nice song to put you in the Christmas home, mood. Home for the Christmas I think it's going to be a classic. Well, and we're uh, we're getting ready, uh, I guess. Uh, this is very Christmassy here on the table right now. I know, right it feels now. really, really, really Christmassy. Uh, we've got uh, Christina Roman from uh, Rosewood Estates and Christina, great to have you here on the show. Thank you, guys. And you brought us some goodies, right? I brought a lot of yummy. No, we Chris is the social bee. Yes, I am. For? Rosewood Estates. Which... We're in our talk that we were just having like off the air. That's uh, it's amazing. It sounds like you guys are really be focused, be centric. We are be centric. <laughs> good word. <laughs> Very good word. Actually, we are so be centric that at Rosewood, everyone, the, even the winemaking team, we all have bee names. Wow. So we all have a we have a queen bee. We have a bee master. We have the worker bees. We have a honeybee. Do you have any yeah, drones? Have any drones? Yeah, yeah, we have a few drones. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got to have the drones. <laughs> we have an inner bee, someone who's really energetic. Oh my everyone god, that is, is uh, so cute. Everyone's blessed with a, uh, a bee name. So why is the bee so instrumental? It's instrumental because that's how we got there. So Rosewood is a winery, a meadery, what produces honey wine. So mead is honey wine. Mead, M-E-A-D. D, not with the T. This mead. stuff right here. Yeah. Okay, so that means it's a honey wine. Honey wine, and then okay. we also produce honey. Okay. But it's really the beekeeping that got us to where we are, and really that got us to Niagara. My grandfather was a beekeeper, and he brought it here to Canada in the 50s, and he loved beekeeping. It was such a big passion for him. And it translated to my, his son, my father, and my father you know, transitioned it over to us, and so we're third generation beekeepers. And so he, when he came here to keep bees, was it for the wine or was it for to create honey? Honey. It really oh, was okay. honey as a hobby. Some people oh. golf, collect cars. Some people keep bees, you know, have a garden. It's a hobby. It really is. Wow. There's a lot of hobby beekeepers, even in the city. And so my grandfather wants to, wanted to keep bees. Uh, he loves the honey. He loved the taste of honey. He loved to cook with it. Loved making candles out of it. And then as we kept growing it and growing it, we decided to move to Niagara, and that's when we started making wine and the honey wine. So do you make any wine with the grapes, or is it all with the honey? We actually do grape wines as well. Okay. So we do like a Pinot Noir and a Riesling and a Merlot, but then we do the mead and then the honey. So okay. we really have three main products. So, so, so wait a second. Okay, so, so honey wine is wine made out of honey. I thought it was grapes, and then honey was added in. No, no, not at all. Oh. Okay, we better taste this uh, meat. <laughs> I want to taste some? Because, uh, it's one thing to talk about it, Sandra, <laughs> but you can't really understand mead Absolutely. unless you taste well, it right. Look at it. It's got a cork. Yeah. So it's in a wine bottle. Is it alcohol? It is alcoholic, absolutely. So all it is is fermented honey. So it's honey, water, yeast. We, oh. put, it in, we put it into French oak. Actually, this one goes into French oak. And... Uh, so just as, as as an FYI, I am vegan, but I, I am going to try this. And we did talk about the state that the bees are kept in. They are not exploited. No You're bees not, were no. exploited. No, actually, and their bees are actually quite Cheers, happy. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ching. And look at it. You see, look, look at it. It looks like a wine. It's got legs. It smells yeah. like wine. <laughs> it's, got, oh, it's got legs. It's got lots of legs. <laughs> it's not something I want to hear. Uh, it smells like it, too. Yeah. A little more uh, honey flavor, a little more floral, a little more citrus. Mm-hmm. So all it is is fermented honey. Wow. You know, I'm not a big wine drinker, but that is actually really nice. So it's it's uh, kind of sweet, which yeah. you'd expect from honey. Yes. Like, is it more of a dessert? It is more wine? of a dessert wine. You can use it as an aperitif, so with cheese. Depends on when you like your cheese plate. Some people like the cheese plate at the beginning. Some people enjoy the cheese plate at the end of the meal. So really your preference. But it is the mead, 
the, especially the Sumid, the Mead Royale, is the best pairing in the holidays, especially with the cheese plate or with chocolate. Okay, should we be pairing it with some of the stuff right now? I, okay, I show us. Take us through so it, Christina. I have, the kick. I have I the kick do have the honey. So I do have the honey that is actually what we make. This is the base of the mead, is the honey. Then we have three cheeses here, actually all local. We really love local products. Oh, yeah. We are based in Niagara. We love local cheese. We love local wine, local food. Local tomatoes taste better than anything else. That's true. Um, so we have Niagara Gold here, actually made in Niagara, uh -huh. hence the name. Blue, Blue Elizabeth. This is a blue cheese from Quebec. And then here we have Thunder Oak from Thunder Bay. They make wow. cheese in Thunder Bay. Oh, they do. Actually, one of they the biggest cheese. artisanal Gouda producers. I thought they just made subway cars. <laughs> no. They also make cheese. It even says Thunder Oak. From wow, Thunder Bay. That's wow, that's amazing. great. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here. You go try. ahead. You guys go okay. ahead. Okay. All right. Which one do you want, Sandra? I don't want any because oh, I don't yeah, eat cheese. Right. Okay. So this cheese right here is the Thunder Oak Gouda. Uh, mead it tastes really great with something a little bit salty. Try because it is a little bit sweet. Delicious crackers. Should I? Oh, I just want to try the cheese for a minute. <laughs> mm. And then the wine, right? The wine, absolutely. So it's, nice, it's a little salty. So mead, because it's sweet, it goes really well with salty, with creamy foods. It's got a really mm. nice aftertaste. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it really does. does. You try it with the, no, you can't have the cheese, but. Uh, you can have with the chocolate. With I know the Sandra can have the dark chocolate. I can have the dark, dark okay, chocolate. Okay, great. Move on to the chocolate part? So, Absolutely. Okay, while we're doing that, while we're tasting this and, mm -hmm. and, and enjoying this, but I just think it's really uh, fabulous that just the interest in bees mm -hmm. and then all the different products that, that can come from bees the mead, the honey. honey, and then the candles. But you also mentioned something about an ointment. Absolutely. Well, you can make, so bees also make propolis. Propolis is a type of bee glue. That's how we call it. It lines the hive. And propolis is like a, a more intense version of a honey. And that's actually really good for ulcers and medical reasons. But even just honey. Honey with tea, lemon. is great when you're sick, not feeling well, if you have a sore throat. Just add a little bit of honey to your tea or coffee. I love honey, honey and coffee. It's one of my favorite combinations. Um, but just even simple by itself. You don't see people drinking coffee with honey very much. No. Tea is very common. Yes, but absolutely. Isn't that interesting? I never even thought of that. And you mentioned before we came on that honey was a balancer for the it body. Is a, like it what? is a balancer because it's quite neutral. And that's why this wine, it is a little bit sweet but not acidic. You taste really the warm notes, the vanilla, the caramel, the apricot, warmer mm -hmm. tones, not really mm -hmm. acidic. Mm -hmm. Honey is quite neutral, so it balances out. And a lot of why people, our bodies, you know, are in a state of shock or stress is because the acidity levels are so high. But honey is quite neutral, so it balances you out. You're talking about the pH? Yeah, that too as well, that as well. <laughs> but for, in terms of wine, there's a lot of acidity in wine and a lot of acidity in our bodies. And honey is quite neutral on the pH scale. Wow. And so more, how about ice wines? Are they, is that, because that's a much sweeter type much of wine, sweeter. right? That's about two to three times sweeter than this. Okay. Yeah, so if you're a fan of ice wine, you know, this, you'll enjoy this. If you're not that big of a fan of an ice wine, try this one. This one has a nice alternative. It's also great. You can have it chilled or even room temperature. We found it even tastes great on its own at room temperature. You can wow. really enjoy the mouth feel on it. Again, great with cheese, great with chocolate for the holidays. And crackers. Also in cocktails. So we've actually been experimenting with mead cocktails. She last night I had a fabulous one. It was with uh, pear nectar, uh, vanilla ginger, and then the mead together. It's beautiful. That sounds really good. Yeah. Yes, it is. So let's talk about. I mean, people. There's a lot of hype in Ontario, at least in my perception, about the wine industry, the grapes, mm -hmm. and a lot of new wineries, yeah. boutique wineries coming out and people interested in that but people don't normally i mean we've heard of mead but how is the public uh accepting mead or is there are they are is they are they used to to drinking it there is a stereotype and a stigma people think beekeepers are a little older uh long beards you know little albert einstein looking fellows in mean, beekeeping unfortunately that's just a stereotype but my brother and i are in our mid-20s and we love beekeeping we've been beekeeping since we were four years old wow. helping you know you know eat, small tasks around the apiary but we were helping out so we've grown up beekeeping for us it's you know just uh, something it's else we life. do yeah it was hard we had we had a few people come in and ask me these technical questions i've never learned from a textbook i've learned from or we've learned from just farming and doing it so we've learned really just wow. naturally and just you know this is a brush this is how you do this we haven't learned from a textbook now i'm actually reading more in textbook to learn the technical terms of it 
but for us it was you know just like a farming family it really is another form of farming people don't consider it beekeeping like that but it is now are they taking honey wine seriously so far yes okay. actually yeah and actually okay. you can find the mead in the lcbo right now which is great and so far so good really great responses and they sent the mead all over the province from king harding to ottawa to windsor the mead is everywhere and so far so good the response has been great there is no other option right now in ontario for local mead even Canadian mead, we are it right now, wow. and we are wow. one of the we are known as one of the more artisanal and award-winning producers. Uh, we've been winning a lot of awards with the meads. I know it's been new for us. This is actually our third vintage with it, but we've been doing very well with it. Like internationally. Uh, internationally, actually, yeah, we sent it into the national mead competition out in uh, Boulder, Colorado. There is a competition out there, and we actually submit the wines and the honey wines. We've been doing quite well, actually. So, the, you know. so who's your greatest competition? Is it in the States? In the States, absolutely. Okay. There okay. are a few actually in Alberta, in Saskatchewan, there are growing meaderies because they wow. can't produce grapes. So that's why honey wine was so important in the ancient wow. world. Okay. Is they, is these are happening. Do you need some more? I need some more. Uh, you need some more. <laughs> and oh, it's really good because you think nice. it might be so sweet. Very nice. But it's, it's, balanced. It's, it's, yeah. balanced. it's balanced. It is yeah. very balanced. And it's that's that's the, the 3D, 5D thing. I think it's because they're interdimensional. Of which, yeah, you didn't hear about <laughs> this, I, but, but Sandra mentioned that the bees, yeah. and we had a good conversation because people are concerned about the bees. Uh, they, they somebody should, said, they should and be. Extinction, they should yeah. Be. And because, uh, so, you know, if we had no bees, we wouldn't have any fruit right yellow plums we would not have a single yellow plum in this province if it wasn't for our bees really so that's why it's actually great we're creating a great ecosystem out in Niagara and on the Beamsville bench that's where Rosewood is located uh, so on the Beamsville bench we have our main site but we have seven, eight other properties now where our bees are located and we're actually helping the local farmers we're helping sustain the local neighborhoods. Our bees are great. And not they get to roam around. They're not caged. They're not. Not at all. And that's why our honey is actually known for wildflower honey. They source multiple wildflowers. We don't tell them where to go, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, because they're going to sting you. <laughs> no, so, you know, we let them roam free. We give them, we find a good spot for them. And we're all actually on the escarpment. And a lot of the escarpment is now protected, and that's what we were looking oh, for. Oh, very nice. So yeah. they're UNESCO biospheres, and so not a lot of subdivisions, not a lot of growth, and that's exactly where we want to be beekeeping. And we have protected land. The bees are there. They can do whatever they really need to. We find great farmers to work with. They would like the beneficial benefits of the bees. We want the great pollen source, so you know we help each other out. It's really mutual agreements. So we're getting out there, talking to the farmers, and creating nice. mutual agreements between the two of us. And, and you were go ahead, sorry. Well, go I was on. just going to say you were you were saying before that you know people are concerned about colony collapse disorder. That's exactly. Yeah. But you were saying the way you guys look after your bees, there's no danger yeah, really because no. you are treating the bees with the respect they deserve, right? So they don't want to leave. It's about respect and sustainability. It really is. Uh, we do integrated pest management as well, so IPM, but we use a natural way. So colony collapse disorder, or CCD, has been happening more in the states, in the big, in the big state like California and in Florida, where they use a lot of bees for pollinating. Ours aren't directly used for pollinating. Ours are honeybees. They do naturally what they want to do. We don't move them. Our bees are stationary. They never leave. We never move the hive. And that's what creates a lot of the stress you were saying. Stresses and disruptions. They do not enjoy that. Cracker, yes, you can have some. Have some with the honey. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want the meat to balance it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so um, so it, it really is uh, the movement and the pesticides, because they were sent into orchards. Okay. A lot of the orchards were spraying. Okay. The pesticides were getting to them. And basically, it was like a nerve gas for the bees. And they started wow. getting confused. Ooh, and they okay. used to clump together okay. and leave the hive together. And that's why it's called colony collapse disorder. We don't have that problem at Rosewood. Because we're on the escarpment, we're in protected areas. Our bees are sustainable and natural. And you're not working with the bees. You're not trying to force the bees to no, not at all. To, to, to work with nope. at, at, at whatever we want them to do. We're not trying to exploit I guess no, is the word I'm absolutely not. For. For example, this year, it was such a dry year, mm -hmm. we had to make sure they have enough honey left over for the winter time. So we will take less to make sure okay. they can survive. Okay. I mean, we So you have a formula that you work with, Christine? That well, we, uh, we decide really on the spot. We take a look at the yields, okay. and okay. we do make sure that they can survive. It really is about both of our survival. So you know, we work with them. We don't really have you know board meetings with them, but <laughs> you know, we really do have kind respect. Bee meetings. Yes, we do have bee meetings, but we respect them. and. Uh, and because of that, we're able to make really great honey and really great mead. 
and they Can create I ask another, I mean, a bee absolutely. So okay, are you worried about the Africanized bees <laughs> coming? So a little bit. There's always been cases. That's always going to happen through history. Like where are they now? No, I don't the know killer bees. Right now. How right far now? have they come? <laughs> We've heard a little bit in the States, but nothing really coming up here to Canada. Okay, good. It's too cold here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking Hopefully. too. Now, have you ever been stung? Yes, I have. A yeah. lot? Mm, very rarely. Is it, it to you, because you live with them, is it like a, a mosquito bite for somebody else? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I really don't feel it. It hurts for a second. You know, a few minutes it might become a little red. The last bee sting was on my arm. I didn't really feel it. Uh, do they, are, like wasps, do they die after, do they, can they sting you once and then they're done? Unfortunately, is yes. Yeah, it is the way it happens. Like, that That's how they mate, though, actually. That's how they mate? Oh, right. Yeah, so, yeah, there's so they die. Like yep. the black widow. Yep. Wow. So it, it's, na it's nature. So maybe they're mating <coughs> with the human. Maybe. They're going to that fifth dimension. <laughs> okay. Do you really maybe. think they're going to the fifth yes, dimension? absolutely. Did you hear yes. about that? Yes. No, yes, I didn't I hear about that. Apparently they're going to the fifth dimension. Mm. Yes, they're already there. <laughs> They're already there. They're preparing another world for us. <laughs> it's true. Especially <laughs> after the 21st. Well, after you drink you some meat, hopefully you'll get there as well. So. <laughs> See, when we're nice to them, they're nice to us. They won't sting you if, they're nice, if you're no. nice to them. Gentle. I mean, you hear, sometimes we, when we go beekeeping, we don't wear any protection. And yeah, we're just calm. It's about being calm. See? Did you hear about this urban beekeeping? thing yes. that's going to be happening yes. like yes. I hear that people yeah they have yeah. they keep these to get more fruit in yep. their trees and Absolutely. It's, it's just beneficial yeah I know some hotels here in Toronto they have beehives even in restaurants in the city so some of the, our restaurants have been inspired by our beekeeping activities wow. and they started keeping bees so we we help chefs we help restaurants with their beekeeping here in the city Wow. Yeah. Okay so uh, we're, we're hitting the holiday season here and uh, I'm really enjoying the mead here it's today, lovely. actually, it's really, really it's, nice. It's, and if you think ice wine's too sweet, you don't have yeah. to worry about it with this stuff. Absolutely. And actually, it is it the balance. I would say balance is the right word for. So it. when is the best? Like, is it is it a good holiday thing, or when's the best occasion for people to? Uh, it it you is know, the enjoy perfect uh, drink for the holidays. It really is, uh, with the amount of food and with the variety of food we eat during the holidays. You think a little more chocolate in your diet, more cheese, and more appetizers, more food that are richer. The honey balances those rich foods. Anything that's salty really balances through it. But it's great also in the summertime, even though I know we're in the holiday season. It is fantastic right now. It's available right now at the LCBO. But through Rosewood, you can get it all season long. So you can even buy it on our website at rosewoodwine.com. And also the Mead Royale, it's great with curry and spicy food. Oh, wow. So I actually hadn't even thought of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so okay, in yeah. Ethiopia, actually, so meat originates from Arabia. So actually in the Fertile Crescent, that's where it started because honey was so prevalent there. How did humans see at night for the last 10,000 years? Beeswax candles. So honey was, you know, quite it was integral to human survival. So it started there, it went through Africa and then through Europe. Now, hmm. it actually really hit on in Ethiopia. So in Ethiopia, the national drink is Tej, which is honey wine. It's their word for honey wine. Wow. So that's why with their food is so fragrant, the aromatic. So that's why mead and the mead royale, even though it's a little bit sweet, it goes really well with spicy food and sweet food. So again, the cheeses, the mead and the cheese, great pairing, mead and chocolate, great pairing. But also if you like spice, this balances out the spice. Wow, very nice. So it's okay, really I'm gonna versatile. Try, with the chocolate <laughs> now. try some with the chocolate. It's actually really good with the chocolate. You can either go milk chocolate or you can go dark chocolate as well. So I know the dark, we brought a variety here for you guys. Even different flavors. We've got orange chocolate up there. And because the orange really accentuates the fruit of the mead, so it's really great. Wow. Yeah. Really? Well, I envy you guys. I think you have a fabulous <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> I want to raise bees too. Come out and see us. Come out and yeah. see us and enjoy. Yeah. We love having love visitors. Hang out with the bees. Yeah, I know. They're really peaceful. They really are. There's some, even though they move around and they buzz, but there is a rhythm to them, you know, and they do actually dance. There's actually a bee dance. So bees dance and they tell other bees where the pollen source is. So bees have actual dances wow. for each other. So they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Beautiful insects. Uh, they really communicate on a different level. See, told you. I know. They communicate on a different level. Okay, so the so people can come out and see the uh, your operation. Absolutely, they come to Rosewood. So Rosewood's located in Beamsville. Should they call ahead to make uh, up an we're appointment open or? In the springtime, we're open seven days a week. 
Uh, right now we're on uh, more weekend okay. Mm -hmm. okay. tourism, but you can also find us all the time at rosewoodwine.com. We're available and we can ship meat all across the province, or if you can't make it to the website, your local LCBO should have meat. So all the LCBOs Not have Not all of them Rosewood? right now, it's been selling through, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but it's was it hard to get in? Uh, it was With I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, a little bit. They don't know mead. Mead is, uh, even though it's one of the first forms of alcohol, it's not that well known anymore. You know, who does mead? It, it was one of the first forms of alcohol. Isn't that interesting? It's not big in North America. No, no it's not. It's, it's bigger. It's more rooted in Europe and, and especially in Africa as well. Hmm. So we're bringing it here to Ontario. We're bringing it here to Canada and North wow. America. And, you know, people think, you know, it's going to be very overtly sweet. But this mead, especially no. the mead royale, is mm -hmm. It is beautiful. not. A, it is not as overly or overtly sweet. That's, it, it surprised me, too. I expected that. And it's I, I can see that. It's a wonderful, wonderful combination. You know, Ontario and Canada can be a difficult uh, in mm -hmm. a climate for wines, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, they have to work really hard yeah. for the, to make the good wine. But I think the mead, the bees are there, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. Well, that's what's great. People think, you know, how is this the first form of alcohol? But it's three natural raw ingredients that don't really need human intervention. Honey, which the bees make mm -hmm. themselves, water, natural, and yeast, natural. So those three came together, you know, by... Either we're still trying to figure out if it was someone or just nature just kind of put it all together. And that's where we get the alcohol industry from is really, these are one of the first forms of alcohol. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Okay. Well, wow. this has been great to well, have you on today. Yeah. Did we, did next we time we'll do meat cocktails. I know it's so yeah, great. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, Let's good. schedule that now. <laughs> next time. <laughs> next time we'll do the meat cocktails. That's great because sometimes if people find this too sweet, you can put it into a cocktail. You can yeah. use bourbon, you can use scotches, you can use whiskey, vodka, Jen, just keep going. Okay. Wow. All right. So people can find out more rosewoodwine.com, yep. right? www.rosewoodwine.com. And I'm always, because I'm the social bee, I'm also on the Twitter. So you can find me at Rosewood Wine as well. Okay. You're, you're the, I'm the social, the social bee. bee. Social bee at Rosewood. And so the, the Twitter handle is at Rosewood Wine. Oh, okay. People okay. know me as the social bee. My, all of our business cards actually have our bee name on it. Wow. wow. And you have an amazing bee on the top of the wine bottle Absolutely. as well. Even every it's wine everywhere. Bottle. Every wine bottle. Even though it's wine, so the grape wines actually still have the bee. <laughs> Someone's enjoying <laughs> I this I like that cheese, cheese from Thunder Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the cheese. Thunder Oak <laughs> Yes, cheese. the Thunder Oak cheese. Wow. Okay, Thank Christina, so this has been great. Thanks oh, wow. for bringing this yes. spread. And no, yes, I you. look forward to getting you back with the cocktails. <laughs> Next time we'll do cocktails. Thank you. Okay. Wow, that was really good. Let's let's take a little break. I know there's people in the studio would probably love to sample some of this stuff. <laughs> yes. So uh, let's take a little break. Actually, we got Aero Star and the band. Aero, what's the band called? Does it, or ESP. ESP. Oh, see? Going to perform see? for us now, and then we're going to come back with uh, Val and uh, Max as Liquid Lunch continues. We'll be right back. It's telepathic. <laughs> And everyone needs to gain some self-control We can achieve peace, love and unity Oh yeah Let us pray now for the world For the world indeed I've got to find, got to find Peace of mind, peace of mind In the world, in this world indeed Promise. <laughs> what we gonna offer to this new generation? Hopes of constant harmony throughout the land. Oh, the brutal face of man, killing man. Oh, yeah. So let us pray now, now, now for the world. Peace of mind, peace of mind In a world, in a world in need Ow! 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 We must come 
darkness We need to show the light within Purging ourselves and the earth free of war Anger, fear, hate, envy, and pain It's a permanent affliction at your mind, body, soul A drug addiction just to cover up And just to numb the brain to ease the pain to have you no shame Reinforced with anger, jealousy and envy Frustration with your own oppression Is the alleyway to hate and aggression Now war, what is it good for? Nothing, violence You think it makes you strong when you're wrong It hasn't any substance Spitting blood on the land In the sand, for an oil can When on the other hand, you got peace, love, universal unity Everybody better seize the opportunity to get aboard Take a stand, make a plan Together, hand in hand No time for greed, you understand? You can plant the seed before the whole damn world starts to bleed The whole damn world starts to bleed The whole damn world starts to bleed Yeah, the whole damn world starts to bleed Oh yeah So let us pray now, now, now For the world, for the world in need I've got to find, got to find Star and uh, yeah, the yay! Band, the band, Excellent. ESP. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, Excellent. ESP. And we're gonna get a couple more uh, performances uh, yes. a little bit later. And uh, Errol's participating in the Superstars contest, right, Val? Absolutely. Errol is a producer. He's a musical producer of the show. So anybody that wants to ask any questions or talk to Errol, feel free. You can get his email on the website. And um, but yes, Errol's the producer of Superstars. Wow. Okay, fa fabulous. So yeah. what's going on with the contest? It's oh. been a while since we had you wow. on. Wow, I know. We've just had a little bit of hiatus and some redirecting and yeah. moving around. So we're kind of behind a couple weeks, but we're still there. There's no problems. Uh, we are moving to a new venue. Okay. Uh, okay. The new venue is 2152 Danforth. It's called Relish, the Relish Club. Okay. And it's right at Woodbine on Danforth. So you can get off at the Woodbine subway and just walk up half a block and you're right there. Nice. So we are, we're going to have two more nights and we're going to be closing off the quarterfinals. So anybody in the city or surrounding area or wherever. As long as you can make to the Relish Club. As long as you can get to the Relish Club, the 22nd or the 29th, they're both Tuesday nights. Okay, so it's the, the end of this year. It's, it's, right. It's done at the end of this it's year. It's done at the end okay. of the year. Because okay. we're going to start 2013 by giving away that prize. Wow. So we're rolling it over into the new year. Wow, nice. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to this. We have some great sponsors. Um, it's going to be a great product that they're going to be winning, whoever is the winner. I unfortunately don't have anything to do with that, but I love being the hostess. I really love being the hostess. Well, you've had some amazing talent come so some far, Some really right? good singer-songwriters. Yeah. I'm yeah. really, really jealous. <laughs> I think they're all wonderful. Yeah, they are. I've what? seen some too. They're, they're I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know, because you're working on your you're own. You're never jealous. I am. Jealous kind. I know. I, I, I'm a firm believer of paying it forward. Yes. I'm just, I'm lucky enough to be in the studio recording my own album. I have somebody uh, financially backing me up. So I really, really believe in helping Doing somebody else out. Yeah. And that's amazing. Other people have helped me out in the past, so it's always good to do that. So mm -hmm. that's why I do these shows. Wow. So there's some great shows. And we have Max Brand here as well, yeah. Max. I know you are uh, you were playing, where were you, at the Silver Dollar or something? I was like at the Silver Dollar little this past Saturday. It was on wow. the, uh, I think it was the, the 5th of December. And you got a bass player, because I know you were looking for a bass player. I considered f giving you a call about that and volunteering my talents, but I, I got oh. too busy. How, how'd they go, though? Well, it was, well, we kind of got started at 8.45, and by the time that we were finished, people were starting to walk in. Oh. Like, I could have just said okay. to the guys, listen, let's do all the songs that's on there until it's complete. 
And if we would have stayed for another 15 minutes or more, I think people would have gone to see us. See, that's the exact opposite of my problem. Usually we don't start playing until everyone has left. <laughs> <laughs> So we have the opposite so problem. So maybe you guys work together. You'd yeah, have the perfect balance. So. Yeah. Just like the wine, you could be in balance. <laughs> maybe you should be playing for him then, Hugh. Yeah, Max, we can um, work it all out. It'll all even out for Well, him. that's in case if one of our bass players can't make the show. Like, I went through with a drummer, like, for the last show I did the week before. Oh. Like, it was on the 8th of December we, we played at the Silver Dollar. Then the week before, on December the second, we I played at the uh, no December the first. The rock yes, rock opening rock. for the Blushing Brides. Yeah. Oh. Wow! And there was more people there than the Silver Dollar. I mean, like I would say, like in all fairness, that we started early around like um, oh I think it was one eight. We got started on eight fifteen till nine o'clock. We did a forty five minute set. Mm -hmm. It was it was great. Yeah, yeah. it was no, good. No, are you, are you are you your band going to be performing as part of the Superstars contest? Or? Well, I'm going to see if I can get them to come d on a Tuesday night, do like some original songs. Sure. Because I will definitely will write to them about that. Because like we definitely want to, mm -hmm. like we're right now leaning to like I'm going to be writing some new songs good. going into the hopes. Yep. Again, I hate that when that happens. It's okay, Max. It's it's this is we're keeping it real here. Yeah. This is how we real. keep it real. And this is, you That's know, okay. the good and the and the, the bad on technology. Well, it's not right? even bad. It's just real, Max. Exactly. Well, well, I'm just starting to my. I'm starting to write my own songs now. Yeah. And I'm starting to. I may write maybe five songs, and okay. hopefully, like Val, you know, you'll record an album, you know, sometime later in the new year. Yep. You just never know. You don't well, know. we look forward to it because yeah. I know the last one you put out was. Uh, some of the best uh, players in the city were on that record, and, yeah. and it sounds well, like well, they are just on fire. Years, well, that was four, four years ago, but the album I did, like, in 2011, like, it was just Brian Gagnon doing all the playing. Right. And, you know, he plays all the instruments and whatnot. It was kind of like a low-budget CD, but still, it's, it just gives you sort of the the kind of work I'm capable of doing. Absolutely. Low budget is actually good because you know you yeah, really have to you're more focused on the talent. Yeah. And, and the songs. And, and the songs yeah. even. Yeah, well that's part than of the, the production. Talent, right? That's but right, yeah. That's right. So you really get to see the raw talent. He's okay. wonderful. He so did a song Greg Audubus. He did. I think you play off? listen to Lou, I think you played that on that station like four years ago. Yeah, that's, I, wow. that's right. I, I remember that. Okay, so Val, so okay. we're coming up to the end of the year. Superstars, people can still participate. Yes, What's the best way for them to get involved? Um, uh, just to re uh, remind you, while Max was mentioning stage, there is going to be PA, and there's going to be a sound person there, so not to forget. Sorry about the sound effects here. That wasn't my entourage. Making it real. No, it's okay. Making it real. Yeah, real. And uh, just to let you know, there is a stage, and there will not be instruments there, so you have to bring your own instruments. So your own guitars, we have microphones, PA, everything will be there. Okay. So just to remind you, so you have to get in the last two Tuesdays in January. All right. So is it 22nd. best to email you or just to show up? Yes, email. They can enroll online okay. by filling out the waiver and, and forms there. And, and it's $25? Uh, it's $25 okay. to, to enter the contest. Okay. And off they go. And they can do um, two songs. And it's a superstars with a Z. Superstars with a Z. Dot CA. Yes, dot CA. Is the website, right? Yeah. Okay. So please get in if you missed out the last time which a few people missed it because they couldn't make it please don't forget these last two tuesdays because they are the last two and okay. hopefully it's a good time because a lot of people can't make it because they're working or whatever but hopefully a lot of people will be off between christmas and new year so hopefully those people couldn't make it will now be able to make and they it, can right? stay out real late and get really drunk yes because they don't have to go to work the next day exactly <laughs> that's my point that's, that's why i said that they can thing. have as much honey that's wine as they stick. want okay. right all right and just to remind you that i am playing an unplugged show it's so our first unplugged show because normally we just play with the full band all the time on the 28th of January at the Gladstone Hotel. I haven't played there in a long time. Wow. It's on Queen and Dufferin and it is a, a really nice quaint room. My whole band will be there, all four of us, and we're just going to be unplugged with acoustic guitars. And you're doing this to promote the, your next we're project? Be doing, yeah, we're going to be promoting our CD and so we're going to do some of our originals, all unplugged. 
Wow. And nice. we're going to invite a few guests up and just have some fun. Sounds like fun, especially yeah. between Sounds Christmas amazing. and New Year's. Yes, okay. exactly. Superstars with a Z.ca. Mm -hmm. And Val, yep. do you have a website personally or yes, for your Yes, it's ValerieShearman.com. Okay, and Max, how about you? Well, you can, I'll be posting my shows on Weaver of Nation and also the Max Brown Report on my shiny blue shirt on um, Facebook yeah. and also on Yahoo. Okay. Nice. All right. Great, guys. Okay, so we're gonna take a little break yep. now. No uh, we got the ESP band. They're gonna do another track, and we're gonna Woo! come back with Daryl and Lisa and talk about what's gonna happen when the Stargate opens. That's why. That's why the band's called ESP. They will know. They know. Yes. yes. They are so during let's the check know. this and out. And they will. They'll, they'll give us a scoop on the bees too. Please. Yeah. Yes. We'll find out. Okay. Here they are. <laughs> This next song we're going to do is called Face Your Destiny.
right. Okay, welcome back to the show. Uh, we've got, uh, well, that was, so we just uh, saw the ESP that band. That is rockin', smokin' stuff. And we have Errol joining us here well, and that, for the not interview. Not Errol. good, it felt good. You guys have to go see you guys live. You guys are amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, we're not quite ready uh, for live, although we did it today. But uh, wow, <laughs> you sounded pretty know ready. Oh yeah. my god, okay. I, was, I could just listen to you all night. Oh, awesome. We're uh, just in pre-production. We're actually starting to record our um, our EP, and so uh, the guys in the band uh, ESP. That was uh, uh, Jamie Patchett on drums, and uh, Al Sayers on bass. Wow, you guys were really good. Yeah, yeah I really like uh, Al's uh, gear. I like yeah, his that's guitar, uh, his, uh, his uh, rig. He's got a boom and bass, that guy, too. Right? For a little light yeah. <laughs> setup that he's got, it's like that's what it should be. Yes. Yeah, yeah totally, yes. totally. And we have Lisa joining us here as well, Lisa Francis. Hi. And Hi, Lisa. Hi. I'm not part of the ESP band, but I have ESP. I, do you really? <laughs> okay, good. So we won't even have to, you, we won't, we'll just stay silent here. Because <laughs> okay, you yeah, know what we want to yeah, ask, yeah, right? Yeah. I, no. just w I just want to finish off with the superstars. Yeah. Okay, superstars, sure. don't forget, anybody who's interested in coming on, uh, go to the website, superstars.ca, with a with Z, a Z yes. and, uh, and sign up and be part of the contest. We're wrapping it up this, this season, actually, it's the end in January, we're wrapping the whole thing up, and we're starting again a new season, and we're going to have some really great things happening, some, a lot more um, um, wow. sponsors and some really incredible things that'll happen next year, so. So, so you're making this a regular thing then, Arrow? Yeah, wow, we think we're gonna nice. go uh, that is great. Full, full time, full tilt with it. Um, it's getting some good response, so we're, we're gonna keep it going. And you've seen some of the talent coming, coming have, across too, yeah. and it's pretty good, pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, that's assuming we're gonna get past the Stargate opening <laughs> tomorrow. Well, you know, there's always a little <coughs> getting it through the the canal, the it's, it's I know. rebirthing. It's just a bit of a bottleneck. It's, a, it's just yeah. a bit of a bottleneck, it's a and then we're going to we're going to yeah. We'll, and the bees we'll are helping. Through. And the bees. The bees will, will be there. Yeah, to, and they're they're helping. Guide us. Yes, they're beings. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, be that as it may. <laughs> uh, now let's talk about what you guys are doing together because you're doing a musical event. Errol, yes. and, and Lisa's involved with uh, something to do with, uh, what, the Mayan well, calendar you know, coming to an end? We're, we're coming down to the wire. It's uh, 2012, and uh, we've got some energies that are moving, are coming in. We've got 12, 12, 12, which is, which is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. And Lisa and I are doing a meditation. You want to yes. say anything about that? Yeah, we're going to do a little meditation tomorrow for the 12, 12, 12 gateway. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, there's a lot of different beliefs the world over about, you know, d the What's Mayans happening? have it one way, people's interpretation of the Mayans thing. But really, what people really need to, if they want to, like, look at this time as a time of change, it's more about the consciousness of humanity, mm -hmm. the fact that we've all become much more aware of our environment. I mean, in the last 20 years of our own lives, we've seen people go from being so unconscious about nature, about bees, as you were talking about earlier, and all those type of things. It was very unconscious. But consciousness has sped up, and this is like the last part of this period we were all born into. And if we look at uh, one of the um, more held beliefs is that it's the, the Earth is moving in a 26,000-year cycle, broken into four or 5,000-year periods yeah, roughly procession of the equinox and that we started in the golden age uh, right now we're in the tail end of the iron age and um, the Mayan calendar just signifies the end of the iron age which in itself is a great thing because it's the beginning of the golden age right. and as I try to say to people even if we who are in our age group look at the children that have come in mm -hmm. in the last 20 years children seem to have remarkable abilities that we look and we go like we How don't remember yeah. ourselves being that way yes. well that's because of consciousness itself and so we should all be looking at this time as a it's a great thing for humanity I don't know I've that we're really going to the fifth dimension there's a great talk about moving from the third to the fifth and all this and and we very well maybe I don't think anybody can precisely say but they say with tomorrow's opening that we should all be moving. Uh, you've read a lot of books now. You've done a lot of 
studying and now is the time to take that and just move that into your heart to open your heart mm -hmm. and be the example you want to see right exactly and be as I've been trying to tell my kids for several <laughs> years be yes be you you could really look at this time and say as we move into the golden age where things are more telepathic and it's a time now where you you want to view the other person that you're dealing with and and think to yourself that is me yeah. mm -hmm. and so don't you think a, a, as along with the tele telepathic um increase that it's also empathic as well of oh course yeah. yes yeah. For all, sure. all our extrasensory esp parts will be accentuated for sure and many yeah. people are feeling heightened emotion around this yes, time right yeah. now. I mean, if, if you're someone who's been into the Palladian accounts of things for many years, they would say we're in the nanosecond of the nanosecond, that it started in 1982, this, this, this consciousness raising, and that we've, right now we're in the very tail end of it, and that's why everything feels so um, heightened. And we're really supposed to work now from this gate from this gate from the 12th till the 15th of January, if you're of a mind to believe that this time means something, um, you want to know that this is the gate. Keep your heart open in the gate. If you find any issues coming up at any time about anything that anybody is saying to you, simply go inside and try to you know, let it go because all of our, it's like as if all your dirt in the laundry is coming to the top just let it sort of shake out and go go down the drain that's what we're being asked to do mm -hmm. and if we look at each other and try to treat each other as if you they are were, me yeah. then we are going to see a huge shift in all of mankind and i think that's what the mayans talk about they say in la cash right mm -hmm. and that yes. means mm -hmm. i am another you mm -hmm. i am another you yes. exactly yeah. so i think yeah. so i think that you know our culture has taken the mayan calendar and twisted it into whatever they want it maybe to fear fear and, fear and yeah, other it's things a lot of fear driven stuff and you know? fear is the great thing that keeps us from being able to look at the other person and say that is me it's all of our fears that stop us from doing that so we're really being asked and they say this gateway between the 12th of December and the 15th of January, you really want to multiply as much love in that time as possible because the it's 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 like as if it would be cement wow. uh, when the things when the thing swings closed on the 15th. <coughs> so what happens after the 15th then? We're into the golden age and everything well, will just become increasingly more um, telepathic. The uh, the twenty first is is supposed to be when the Mayan calendar has ended, but it's not the end of the world. It's the Iron Age it's that's the, the end, end of. Well, it's the end of the Iron Age and the beginning of the Golden Age. Okay. So, um, we're going to be celebrating that because it's a great time to be alive. This is a fabulous time to be on the planet to see this transition, to see us, you know, transition into our beautiful selves as we truly are. So uh, we're getting together um, with a group of people mm -hmm. at uh, a center in Ancaster. It's the um, Merritt Hall in Ancaster, and I'll be there with <laughs> Crystal Journeys, and that will be David Hickey, and he does crystal bowls. Wow, and Crystal Beautiful. bowls and gongs. Beautiful. And um, we'll be there, uh, and it's gonna be a whole day celebration with uh, um, many uh, people doing Reiki, um, nice. massage therapy, they'll have other, it'll be a drum circle. Um, so this will be a whole day celebration of just celebrating this time period. And unity consciousness too. I think that also Definitely. is something that needs to be mentioned too. Definitely. We're moving into a whole u unity consciousness. Definitely. I think that's a whole telepathic and empathic because if you think somebody is another you, you're not going to do it, right? Because yeah. you realize we're all one, right? That's right. right, exactly. That's right. And it's time to take the we are one thing, which I, you know, to another uh, level. I, it's take it oh to yeah. another level. Yeah. I mean, I Quantum find jump. that when people started to use the we are one, it was just another cliche yeah, phrase. Yeah, that's, that's and, the danger uh, of that. Really, yeah. it's time to engage what we are one really means. And um, I'm going to be there at the uh, Ancaster Hall with them, and I'm going to... I have uh, went through a lot of changes in my own life. I'm not an artist, but I started to do these little paintings for my own as part of a a meditation process that I got into, a daily meditation process, and through the course of events ended up after I had about 12 of them, that um, I looked at them and said, like, what is this? And they said, we are your cards. So I've started doing this message art, 
Wow. I do it in a meditative state. I hadn't been going out very much, but I have started now to go out with the art. And um, what I'm happens is, is that uh, on, people <laughs> see the art and if there's a piece that they're particularly drawn to, and I usually have about 50 pieces with me at any given time because I'm doing it every day. If anybody finds a piece that's particularly calling and they have to have it, um, they, they pick that. I give a reading with that piece of art and they take that piece of art home because each wow. piece is an individual message for a specific person. So it's an energetic person. imprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. and, um, that's it's unique. just something very new that has happened to me and of that's course beautiful. I questioned it all and um, I recently went out somewhere where I knew no one and they knew not me and uh, put myself in a situation where I was slightly vulnerable um, because there's no rules, it's not a tarot deck. I didn't buy it at an old cult shop and I didn't have a teacher and so the teacher has been the universe. And I found out that really it is a, through the experience that I've gone out and been with strangers, wow. I found out that it does it impact really people. Does. The messages are true and basically I'm just moving out of the way. That is how I would say it. I don't consider myself to be psychic. I consider myself to be a student of mysticism. I'm a mystic, if I'm anything. And so. a messenger. And a messenger. Did you bring some today? Is that I what you did. have there? Can yes. You, can you show us? I can show you. I don't know how I'm going to show is it, you. A big can I help? You can well, help. It's, it's, um, a, uh, oh, set up. This is my little setup so that I can go anywhere. And I just basically take this and lay this out. Wow. And um, then the people are able to choose. Can you lift them out of there? And they come oh, yeah, they all come they, out. They, can we pull one out just to, you can, uh, yeah, to you pick can pull one out, out to see? Anyone will come out. Oh, wow. Here we go. Beautiful. Oh, and it has, oh, this has a saying that says, please forgive me, thank you. Yes, yeah. because I'm working wow. with the, um, I'm working personally meditating with what is called Ho'oponopono. It's an ancient Hawaiian practice mm -hmm. for, yeah. for forgiveness and letting go. And uh, so that it started out done. just to be a little hobby in my bedroom and it grew into this rather large project. Okay, <laughs> put your mic back on. Okay, mic me. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this is, uh, wow. this is great. Now, Beautiful. let's get... Uh, I don't know can how our can you see it? Are, can you see it? Dealing with all this, but um, okay. sorry guys, sorry camera guys, <laughs> but they said keep it real, and yeah. this is real. A, yeah, there are. Two and there's of lots of them, and just, they all have sayings. Well, they all have nice individual sayings. Me. Yeah, they I'm all sorry, have the whole pono pono. Well, it's gorgeous. So they say, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I, I love you. Mm -hmm. So what's the point that, like, why is this? Who are we speaking to when we say please forgive me? You want to pick one? Okay, yeah, it's not an, okay. Here, have a seat, guys. Part of the wonderful thing about Ho'oponopono is it's not an intellectual thing. This is not a thing. We like to think. As humans, our biggest problem is we think too much. So in Ho'oponopono, if I'm with you, you say something, it f makes me feel something. All I'm going to do is go inside of myself and say thank you for you bringing this opportunity to okay. me because it's bringing something up in me that needs to be forgiven and let go of. Because as humans, every time something's happening to us, Ho'oponopono teaches us that uh, it's our memory. Mm -hmm. We're reacting from our memories. As I speak to you now, if you have a memory that sounded like this, if you have an experience like this, part of you are living this moment through the past. So we are trying to, in Ho'oponopono, you're trying to release the memories so that when someone speaks to you, you are responding from inspiration rather than memory. memory. Well, I heard that uh, Dr. Emoto did that, did the water, the, 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 water. the, the water ceremony, Messages. even in Toronto, he did it. Yes. yes. And, uh, but he did it in Japan after the Fukushima thing oh. as well. Yes, awesome. because it's yeah. really important for all of us, whatever comes to you, to try to just do your part and let it go. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. guys, yeah. this okay. has been great. Yeah. Uh, now let's give out all the contact info and Errol, is there, if there's something sure. else you want to mention? You know, just uh, our contact information, um, the website for the cards are? Messageartcards.com. Cards and you can leave a message there for me with your email if you want to uh, have a reading. Okay. And they can be arranged if someone's in my area. They can be in person, and if they're not, it can be done 
over the internet and I would send the, um, the piece of art via snail mail. Okay, mm -hmm. and, Errol, and uh, ESP, if anybody wants to uh, know where, what we're doing and keep up with us, uh, that's the Errol Star Project, that's E-R-R-O-L-L-S-T-A-R-R, project.com, and uh, you can find information there. Okay, guys, and of course, uh, as part of Superstars, superstars.ca, superstars, yeah. dot CA, superstars with a Z. Two, with more, a Z. two more gigs this year, and then on to the semifinals, correct? Actually, we're it, the, it's at the end of the, it's in January. Okay, okay, okay. So I think it's January 22nd, 22nd and 29th. Oh, I thought it was December yeah. 22nd and 29th. Mm, oh, my mistake. No, okay, no. so it's not Christmas. It's all it's on not. the website. It's all yeah. on the website. It's all on the website. Yeah. It's all on the website. Okay. Okay. So okay. check it out. Thank you. Okay, guys, thanks well, it's for Christmas doing this. Christmas somewhere else in the other part yeah. of the world, so it's still Christmas. Okay, <laughs> Errol's going to do another performance for us right now, and then we're going to come back with Sean, Sean Dalton as Liquid Lunch Thank continues. Thank you, guys. Okay, Thank thanks, you very guys. much. Bring it. bring it in easier.
Thank you, Violet Flame. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back here on the show. We got Sean Dalton joining Hello us. Hello again. Hi. Again. And Sean, okay, so what are we talking about? McGinty and the financial state of Ontario? Yeah, it's McGinty and the road to Ontario's fiscal bankruptcy. Okay, let's talk about, mm. let's get into so it. I see that mm. even though you had some wine, you're not any soft <coughs> around the edges. You're still as passionate as you were last yeah, time. <laughs> so far, anyway. I mean, it's still early in the show, right? Um, okay, do you mind so if I read this article a little bit? Sure. Let's go okay. Right to it. This article was published on Thursday, November 20, 2012, and page six of Metro News Ontario Economic Status on the Decline. StatsCan's latest payroll employment report released Wednesday show Ontario lost about two thirds of the 52,500 jobs shed nationally by employers in September. But it is the agency's 10 year perspective on the province that is most revealing of Ontario's lagging performance. It shows Ontario's share of Canada's employees has been slipping in the past decade to 38% from 39.2% in 2003. That's how much of a slip. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, as of September, there were 5.8 million payroll, payroll workers in Ontario. So none of this shows the calculations. Like we have 18.7 million people in the labor force as of September 6, 2011. So mm -hmm. that's pretty stoic. Like I don't know what the, the new numbers are, but I always base that number on mm -hmm. my calculations. So I punched in the numbers. 44 per, like Ontario employs 31% of all the employees in the country. Mm -hmm. Yet 44% of Canada's unemployed workforce, or 620,000 out of the 1.4 million unemployed, live in Ontario. Wow, okay. And th th those 620,000 people um, represent 10.7% unemployment rate for Ontario, whereas Saskatchewan and Alberta have an unemployment rate of under 5. Mm -hmm. So wow. it's twice the, it's wow. twice the okay. average. So Ontario is, has lost its manufacturing sector. We're struggling in many ways to create meaningful employment for people. I mean, there are some great paying jobs in Ontario, but if, if our productivity is low, and it is, we're not getting together and creating the opportunities of tomorrow by taking the risks we need today. You know? Okay, so that's a fair statement. I mean, I, I could make the argument that just that, you know, the reason Saskatchewan and Alberta have low unemployment rates because they have big resource sectors that are, you know, clamoring for employees. And Ontario as a, a mature industrial economy. I'm about to get to that in a minute. There are okay. some really shocking statistics which will explain why Ontario's decline has been precipitously harsh compared to those other provinces. Because we see we see declines in manufacturing economies all across North America. Right. Even, uh, I don't know about Europe or Japan, but you know, a lot of the jobs are moving to China, moving to Mexico, moving to mm -hmm. other third world countries. We'll do a show um, in the future next year about um, uh, the Canadian Dream Part 2, and I've got examples to, to counter those, those uh, premonitions. I found evidence that we are slowly moving back to making stuff here or creating wealth for this country. Okay. okay. So, okay but good. it took me a while well, to find That's positive. Them. Absolutely. So Ontario, okay, this magazine is called The Canadian Immigrant to December. It was just released. Okay. And um, it says Ontario has seen its share of immigrants to Canada drop by one third from 184,640, 2001, and 99,000, 2011. But it said, well, economic immigrants accounted for only 52% of newcomers to Ontario, so people with educations, degrees, linguistic ability. So that means 48% didn't know English, didn't have an education. So that's kind of like a low percentage. And then it says um, Ontario's newcomers earned 23.2% less than their Canadian counterparts in 2011 and had a jobless rate of 15.7%, whereas unemployment rate overall in Ontario right now is 10%, 10 10.8 or 10.9. Yeah. So it's 50% more for new wow. citizens. Wow. And I was actually dropped off by a Bangladeshi doctor from a cab, and I talked to him, and he goes, oh, um, I came here to be a doctor, but I didn't get my credentials recognized. I'm like, what's the Bangladesh's medical system compared to Canada? Is it similar, is it different? He goes, well, you want to know? I'm like, well, I don't live in Bangladesh. You know, give me a hint, right? Is it similar in Ontario? He goes, it's almost identical. They have the same procedures. He said all he would have had to do was write a test to do it. But he said when he came here, he didn't have, you know, his foreign credentials weren't recognized. And him and his wife had kids, so they had to take whatever job they could, you know, right. to, to hustle. So he's driving in the graveyard along with 199 other cab doctors in Toronto who are now cab drivers in yeah. this great city. So that's not what the immigration system is supposed to do. It's supposed to create economic opportunity yeah. by assessing people's credentials and then funneling them into the field where they're expertise, right? In Ontario, only 24% of new citizens are working in their field of professions. As especially considering we have mm -hmm. such a shortage of doctors. And, but it seems to be that it's, it's quite clicky and that they don't want to recognize them because they don't want to um, uh, 
welcome more wind because I think they want to keep it like diamonds and like, you know, as, as a limited absolutely supply. Absolutely. The, the unions have th some that do with that. But the Liberal Party of Canada, even they're, they're just developing an immigration strategy for this year. They never had one in the last 20 years. They've never had any standards. They never had any ability to, you know, funnel people into the fields that they might want to work in. They didn't have a clue. And they just used it as an ethnic vote bank. And I'll show you. Um, well, I, I think, too, one of the things that I think is that they've moved away from a, a full employment strategy they're very far away from a full employment strategy they so are. that that means that 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 hurts not just new canadians but it hurts existing canadians yeah we as have well. to pay for the uh, welfare benefits for the 15.7 percent of unemployed who might have to do that in order to and we have to know. suffer the problems of crime and so forth when people fall through the cracks and and have mm -hmm. to somehow support themselves yeah. and, and since 76 percent of new citizens are working in fields other than the profession in ontario um, youth end up suffering because the unemployment youth ends up higher than it needs to be because they take kids' jobs. Yeah. You know? Okay, Sean. Okay. Let's um, get through this. Uh, all right. Um, this newspaper, I'll show you some, uh, there's three newspapers. Um, the South Asian Times, Generation X, is the least progressive in my opinion. Okay. McGinty, ahead of the curve on sale in Ontario. Rana Sakar, Canadian Indian Business Council. McGinty served Ontarians well. Jit Tripathi, he's the chair of Panorama in India. It's a TV show, like where they have their thing. McGinty believed in including communities. That's B. Singh. He was the Ontario Seeking Gudwara Council. A lot of McGinty on that page. McGinty gave immigrant communities a sense of belonging. Nawal Atik, Canadian Association of Pakistan Origin. Sounds like he's doing a great job. You know, he's. Yeah. But he showed up at all these people's um, uh, ethnic community concerts, and they showed up at their festivals. McGinty was literally there at every single one of them, trying to get get votes. Doesn't exactly come know? across as balanced journalism. Well, when you well, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's McGinty, McGinty, every single headline right. is McGinty. Yeah. yeah, and it's all good. Like, there's not one, one sense of, um, like, look at this, uh, the Epoch Times newspaper. The Ontario train wreck continues while its citizens slumber. Ontario has an acute financial problem. Even with all the 0% contracts being put into the broader public specter, sector, the provincial de uh, deficit still remains deep. The, the province suffers one debt downgrade earlier this year, remains on credit watch for another. Each one increases the interest of the province must pay on its outstanding debt, currently about half as large as the federal government's total debt, and growing about one and a half times Ottawa's unfunded bills, and takes money from health care and education along with all other provincial programs. Uh, Ontario has an acute infrastructure problem, like the TTC and subways. It's all, they're packed, like mm -hmm. they don't even have a strategy. They're trying to build relief lines, and that'll mm -hmm. cost between 6.2 and 8.4 billion dollars. And those are just estimates. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it's part of a 34 billion dollar uh, 30 year project where they, they're gonna try to increase the infrastructure to meet the amount of people pouring into the city because they don't they can't they can't meet it now in fact on the way here the subway was uh, deficient i had to uh, take a relief bus down from young and blur all the way to dundas but the issue here is that the province is trying to fund education trying to fund health care yeah, and yet has to borrow money to do it absolutely and uh, we should pay some of that debt back in order to for more of a more of a proper balance Ontario has an acute infrastructure problem. The Greater Toronto Hamilton region is choking on its own size, and there's literally no money available to build our transit or roads. The mismanagement and waste surrounding eHealth Ontario, Orange, with a power plant, remember the gas furnace yep. plants that was canceled, were the leading items uh, during that period of time. So why are we um, allowing in more people when we can't handle what we already have? Um, ethnic slush, slush bank for the Ontario Liberals. They don't care if those people succeed or fail, they just want them to vote for them. And they've been doing that for 20 years. But it's years. not just Ontario. Ontario doesn't control immigration. Uh, that's the federal it's issue. Canadian. Yeah, but they want control of it though. Like they were, McGinty, um, Charles Sousa, who's running for the head of the, uh, he, right now he's the immigration minister for Ontario. McGinty, like until the election happens, he's still, they're still there, right? So he said he wants to quadruple the intake or something. Like he, he realized that since Ontario, uh, Harper's government has actually taken a proactive role on this, he, he feels like it's a threat to him because he's the immigration minister for Ontario. He feels he needs to be doing something. And I emailed Jason Kenney. I said, don't you dare give control of the immigration system to this guy. Y mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, you determine whether or not people speak English properly. And then if there's a job for them, welcome them in. Give them the job offer. And they'll determine whether or not they should be a citizen or not. That's the best way to do immigration. Or else you end up with the situation you end up with now. If you get 200 cab drivers who are doctors, if we can't continue to do that to people. We're killing people. Mm -hmm. We're hurting people and destroying their lives. And Well, it's bad for mm -hmm. the... You know, it's bad for, you know, these people come to Canada and they, they their expect, it's, it's way below what their expectations were. Because we lied so to they, them. Exactly. You know. So they don't have a good vibe about Welcome to the point the system. Oh, we don't recognize your credentials. Exactly. Well, what are they supposed to do? They have to take what they can get, right? So okay. Sean, what else do we uh, mm. want to talk about here? So one more. Um, this is another progressive paper. Have you heard of the Weekly Voice? Mm, who's that? Who does that? Um, Benoit Thomas. 
Oh, I know what they you know? Yeah. Front page, take back education from the unions. And remember, we're spending $1.5 billion a year on early childhood education. We could save $1.5 billion if we just scrapped it. I don't think the government should raise Canadian children. I think families should raise their own children. It's not up to the government. I mean, we're turning into France and Sweden. We're going to become like a nanny welfare state. And as mm -hmm. funny as that sounds, I'm, that's dis that disgusts me. I think the government should just run the country and mind their own business. Just collect taxes, make sure the subways and roads are fine, you know, and the schools are functioning. Um, do you mind if I read a little bit of this? Okay. Okay. In 2007, before the financial meltdown, the McGinty government delivered a $600 million surplus with revenue of $104 billion. Sounds good. I mean, that's extra money. In 2012, with a projected record revenue of $112 billion, the government is forecasting a deficit of $15 billion thanks to runaway payroll costs. Ontario universities continue to graduate 7,600 more teachers every year than there are teaching vacancies to be filled. Young teachers know a good deal when they see one. They want a piece of the action. Ontario taxpayers can't afford to pay school teachers double the average industrial wage. The government's two-year wage freeze doesn't go nearly far enough to bring education costs in line. And it says the average industrial wage in Ontario is 47,000 a year with a 2.5% growth rate. Um, teachers, on the other hand, surpass 72,000 in earnings after seven years on the job, and about half, of, half the Ontario teachers earn $95,000 a year on top of the scale. This compares favorably with British Columbia, where teachers earn 81,000, or Quebec, where they earn 72,000, and very favorable with North Korea, apparently. Hmm. Um, add in prescription drugs and extended medical dental wellness counseling, laser surgery, and the cost of half of Ontario's teachers tops at $110,000 a year. I mean, that's a pretty good... You know, they sell, considering they get summer off too, right? You know, absolutely. <laughs> so we're spending more than we can afford. We need to slash mm -hmm. teachers' wages by 30 to 40 percent, and that might seem extreme, but we have we a 15. We should also be slashing politicians' wages too, yeah, though. Yeah, that, that too, right? But we have a 15 and billion. And doctors' wages. Wait, I just want to caution something here because people, you hear a lot on the media. The media comes and it, it uh, uh, knocks the unions for uh, fighting for higher wages. And I, I want to make this point, though, Sean, and that is that everybody in Canada is under pressure to, keep, to lower wages, mm -hmm. lower standards, cutbacks everywhere because the jobs are going to China where they're paying the workers a lot less, puts Canadian businesses under pressure to cut their labor costs, it puts all Canadian workers under pressure to lower their standards of living and it seems to me that the unions are uh, one of the only uh, uh, forces in the country to try and protect the standard of living that we have uh, been so fortunate to enjoy since the Second World War in this country. And if we stop doing that, then we'll just be, it'll be a free-for-all and we'll all be suffering from lower wages, lower standard, standard of living. I think we should try the free-for-all method. The United States do it and they seem to be more productive than we are and they're not afraid to take risks. So if we learn to take more risks based on the talents we had, I think we'd be more prosperous as a nation. Or why, you know, the, the reason we, I mean, to your point and to your point, okay, the reason we have a union is because there is an imbalance because mm -hmm. they're not treated. I mean, the union came out for a reason. It was, it was to treat employees fairly. Yeah. But now it's just as unfair because some people who are lucky enough to be involved in a union get all this special treatment and other people don't. It if you happen to be a government worker, you get this special treatment or a teacher. Yeah. And that's, and that, so, so that's just as much inequality well, and imbalance. Yeah, and one as thing I, 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 to add to all that though, but to have the public sector and the public sector unions arguing for wages and, uh, uh, and levels of pay that are much higher than the average Industrial worker wage, in a yeah. country, and all that money that they're getting paid at those high rates is from taxpayers who are learning, earning less than they are and are struggling, and companies that are struggling to, to meet their payroll so every week, is, is, is somehow the public sector wages should be tied to the overall you know, average you, you wage in what? the country. You know Everybody should just be making the same amount of money, whether you're a doctor or a CEO or a garbage collector, really and truly. Then, then, uh, you know, then the healthcare system would balance itself out because nobody would be, you wouldn't have this hierarchy, you wouldn't have, you know, some people can get medications because it's covered by OHIP. There's a lady I know who needs medication for a, a serious lung cancer that she has. It's three thousand dollars. Well, the healthcare system. And she has to go back to school as a teacher, okay? So she's next to dad. She's going back to school as a teacher so she can have the pension benefits to pay for that medication. You and I wouldn't get that. The, um, that's true. The, um, the Industrial Revolution created two things, the, the, the rise of unions and the rise of company pension plans. Neither are needed in a world where you can hire people all, anywhere in the world to do a, a, a task or a, a job or a chore. I mean, it, it, um, was it Microsoft has operations in India and so does Cisco Systems. They make their software there. Mm -hmm. Scotiabank um, does the same thing. They use people. Mm -hmm. 
and they get it sent over the ocean or whatever. So if you focus on your own merits and you try to create things on your own, I know it sounds tough, but that's the way the Americans do it, and the Americans have a better economy okay, than we do. Okay, you know do. what? The Americans are in big trouble, too. They are, but they're also the leaders. Uh, you ask anybody in Canada here, okay, <laughs> nobody here wants to be our, uh, in our, a situation that the Americans Our culture has been predicated on kicking the Americans in the teeth. Like, we like to put them down and grind them and call them, you know, all kinds of names. But when you stack up the economic uh, benefits and the percentage of happy citizens, we're at, they're at 61% after September 11th. We were at 43%. And then I, I'd uh, question those numbers. You know, I'd question those Well, there's just surveys done with 2,000 people. Like, okay. how do you feel about the future? Okay. And Americans are very optimistic. Okay. Sean, we're... Uh, don't have a lot of time. Is there any final uh, points you want to make here? Yeah, um, get rid of the 1.5 billion early childhood uh, subsidization program, which will save the province 1.5 billion, and in 10 years we can wipe out that 15 billion dollar debt. So, what do young families do who have children who want to go back to work? Well, they're going to have to. That'll create other opportunities for entrepreneurs. Will create uh, daycares. That'll give them chances. Them. I, I knew a lady who did this. She took care of her neighbor's kids, and her husband went to work. Right, like. You know, depend on the community. Don't depend on the nanny state to create a bigger nanny state full of more bureaucracy. It's just madness. Mm. Okay, you know? sure. Your point there. All right. So you're going to continue the work. Where do people uh, get in touch with you if they want to? Or uh, well, I've know. got a research site called endoffees.ca. Okay. And I write book reviews on the financial industry. Um, I'm currently working on a book on the three myths of Canadian immigration. I've done six debates on your show about that topic. One on the sell-off of corporate Canada, and one on the Canadian dream, which I define as economics. So Sean Dalton on YouTube. You can see those debates, and then there's this one on the uh, bankruptcy of uh, the fiscal bankruptcy of Ontario. If we keep going along this path, you know what? I'm going to play a video <coughs> right now because I think a lot of these fiscal problems could be solved if we. And I went. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let this video play for itself. But it's a, about how we should uh, go back to using the Bank of Canada when we need to fund government programs. But Sean, thanks for uh, doing this today. God bless you. Thank, Thank you kindly. You. Yeah. Thank you. Sean. And yeah. uh, we'll play this video. It just might give us some insight about maybe, you know, how we might be able to another approach to handling some of these problems. So we're going to come back with Mark Rock 33. Cycle like lunch hits the home stretch. We'll be right back. <laughs> this opportunity to publicly uh, commend Bill for this marvelous action which has received uh, attention from all around the world. This is an historic event. It's a tremendous undertaking. Hello there everyone. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth TV. The power of the issuance of currency on a global scale is one of the most important tasks to achieve when trying to set up a one world government. However, for the Canadian people, our situation is unique because although our bank was nationalized and therefore owned by the Canadian people, we still borrow from private banks at interest, which is the number one reason for our growing national debt. The Bank of Canada's charter states that the government can borrow up to 50% of its money from the Bank of Canada at 0% interest. However, since 1974, we have been borrowing from privately owned Rothschild-run banks who seek to stretch their powers to all corners of the globe. On December 12, 2011, Anne Emmett and William Krem launched a case to the federal court against the Queen of England, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of National Revenue, the Bank of Canada, and the Attorney General of Canada. We're currently on our way down to the University of Toronto to hear some updates in regards to the case with the Bank of Canada where the plaintiffs are seeking to reinstate the power of issuing currency back into the hands of the Canadian people and to remove it from the clutches of the private banks. This is what they've, they've said about this, uh, uh, this uh, case is that there's no reasonable causes of action, uh, the charter is not engaged, the claim is outside the court's jurisdiction, the plaintiffs lack standing, and the claim is not justiciable. What this motion is, is the first hurdle to arguing the case. Every time you, you sue the government, they bring what's called a motion to strike. No, the government just doesn't like to have these things heard at all. When it initially was enacted in 1937, the bank could directly provide interest-free loans to the federal government, the provincial government, and directly to the municipalities for infrastructure and, ca and human capital expenditure. That was, you know, public works, schools, hospitals, and whatnot. 
so long as it didn't exceed one third of the annual budget and so long as it was paid in the next fiscal year, which most governments had no problem doing. But those loans were interest free, interest free. There was no interest attached to them. Uh, that practice stopped in 1974 when the Bank of Canada joined the gang of bankers over in Europe. Now the only difference between our bank and the other banks is our bank is a public bank. It's the only bank that is a public bank in the G8 countries. The other banks are private banks, including the, the Federal Reserve in the States. Most people don't realize that. that's a private bank. If the Bank of Canada can give it to the commercial banks at one quarter of one percent, then they should give it to the government at least at one quarter of one percent or at zero percent as they're as the bank is mandated to do. This claim has a lot of basis. It's grounded in law. If we get a dishonest judge, he or she will strike parts or all of it, will appeal it. Uh, but there is nothing, there's nothing in this statement of claim that, we're, that we want the government to fess up that's not grounded in solid legal argument. And is this the only set of motions that you expect the government to, to put forth before the actual case comes up, or do you expect more motions after this? Well, if they lose on the if they started. lose on this, they have to file their defense, their substantive defense. What do you say to the actual claim? See, they haven't said anything to the claim. So if they don't strike it on the basis that let's say they they're saying there's no reasonable cause of action, well, they can't put in their statement of defense. There's no reasonable cause of action. They've spent that that fuel. They actually have to justify why they haven't been giving loans, interest-free loans to the government, uh, to, to, to the governments. They have to justify why the minutes of these meetings in Zurich are kept secret. Uh, they have to justify why the Minister of Justice is not, uh, is not tabling the true figures of revenue coming in. And they have to justify it in law. There's no such thing as a failure when you bring a matter to the court that's uh, justiciable or that's ripe for adjudication. Uh, the failure is in not bringing it and not stepping up and, uh, and raising the issues. Okay, we're back here on the show and we've got Marg Rock 33 joining us and uh, Marg Rock. You related to Anne Mark Rock? No, I actually... We don't even know who that is. I don't even know who that is. You don't? Yeah, no, who is it? It's uh, from the Flintstones. That's right? it. Oh, Remember? Okay, it's yes, really yes, Anne yes. Margaret, but yes. on oh it's Anne Margaret. Oh, my God, that is so cute. Right? Perfect. Love yeah. that. Yes. Does she drive with her feet, too? Everyone has to drive with their feet. <laughs> Do you drive with your feet, Anne? I mean, Mark, Mark Margaret, Rock. Mark Rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes when I'm walking down the street, yeah. I know. I guess I do drive with my feet. I gotta just cut a hole out yeah. at the bottom of your car. Yeah, I'll just have they my have pretend car in Toronto. Yeah, be a lot cheaper. Yeah. Okay, so you got a new record coming out. Not till uh, Tuesday, right? Not till Tuesday. It's my very first album. It's for the electronic scene, so all the festivals. Yeah. So it's made for big, big speakers, big forest areas, and it really takes the people through a journey. Okay, so. <laughs> A journey. A journey. We're going to have to play that at the end. I, you got me curious. Here, here, this uh, yes. is what the record, uh, that's what the, the cover label. is going to be. The label look like, right? yes. Yeah, so if you're looking on iTunes or Amazon or Sportify. And the eyes are two different colors. And no. the eyes is actually a picture of me, a photographer took, and I brought it through Photoshop, and I had a mask, and I did some filters. So it's supposed to represent a very kind of conscious and very electric kind of uh, interesting music. How did you get into it, into electronic music? I fell in love with it. My brother's a producer, and he showed me this music when I was in high school. And I went to my very first kind of like rave scene at the government, and I just, I fell in love with this music. And I'm like, this is where I need to be because these people are so conscious, and you never see fights break out at raves. Everyone's like, I love you, man. That's really cool. And and uh, so I felt wow. if I could bring my message of love and light through my music, it would be through the scene when they're ready to receive the messages. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that sounds deep. Well, yeah, what's your process of creating yeah. the music? Process, I finally figured out I write it first on piano. Yeah. So I, can, I have two versions where I sing on piano. So I, I put it through just a basic, basic music as possible. And then I start putting all like the dance and the synthesizers and the drums. So that's the last process is actually making the music. Well, how do you, and what 
What program do you use? Computers. I do. It's all computers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I Thank God I live in this century. Right? Thank God I'm born in this century. Uh, I use computers. It's uh, through I use Ableton Live, and I create all my sounds through that, through plugins and created sounds and. Now, when you say, Margaret, that you take them on a journey, yes, what does that mean? A journey is well. If you're ever, have you ever experienced a rave scene or been to an electronic festival? Mm. Yes. No. <laughs> okay, you don't have to admit it. Um, well, it's I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself, but honestly, no. Have you? Yeah. Um, okay. So you're not dating yourself. They, they, if you experience it every, they consider DJs like shamans. Okay. So shamans, okay. they take you through a so mind journey. Know. Shaman is, now I, now I get now you. Now you kind of understand. So DJs are like shamans, they're looked at as gods. And it's ah. just the people are radiating so much with this music. So they're going, bringing them through a mind journey. So your music does that? Yes. So, so I can't buy your music and listen to it at home though it's got to be in that environment is that what you're you saying you can listen to it at home but you'll feel it you'll truly feel the actual what it was created for if you experienced it in that environment because there's big speakers and there's all these lights these laser lights are flashing at certain moments and then there's all these media screens around you so it's so about hitting all your senses like exactly. your, your visual and your audio exactly so there's a lot of sounds in the in the music you can hear all these different sounds but they're cre they're there for a purpose so are you like a shaman as well? I, s I consider it in my side bio it says evolved DJ and I just say like I want to be a shaman in, in music. Yeah. But I'm not an actual shaman. Shamans would give me the slap in the face if I said I was a shaman. <laughs> so, so when you're writing yes. your music then, you, it, it sounds like it's very vibrational. It is very vibrational. So it's, it's you know, I obviously it has to sound good. Yes. But, but I mean, how important is it that because you have to, you actually have to picture yourself in that environment. Yes. And it's not necessarily what's pleasing to the ear. Are there subtle tones underneath um, and things like that that are going to affect you? That kind of are really um, almost subliminal. Do you do stuff like that? Not too much subliminal. Okay. Uh, it just there's all these sounds created. There's low. There's high. There's you know you'll hear bells. You'll hear trains. You'll hear. How do you know what to come up with? How do you, do you just I go just by feel? I just create. Okay. I'm just, see, I'm a creative artist, so I don't have problems writing music. Okay. So it's just the technical side I had to learn. Oh, okay. So I can create music within an hour, but then to finally polish it, it takes me a little bit more time. Wow. Boy, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing so some of this, which we're going to play at the end. Yes. God you willing. It'd be good to play in your car. Uh, it's a good car music too if you want to blast the stereo wow okay so you can listen to it in yes. another environment yes. than besides that so you know what i think you know how um uh lisa was talking about the kids that are coming in mm -hmm. that know more i think you're one of them who kind of has this kind are of, you one of those? Uh, heightened are you consciousness a crystal child? i think so or an indigo or whatever i do have a company but i'll talk about that not you today do have a what? i do have a company that uh teaches leadership development through arts so, but that I'm here for the album today, but wow, yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay, that's we have amazing. to ask you because yes. you are, you know, a shaman, even in though music, somebody but might not that I'm kind of shaman. 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 Don't come well, after me. I mean, you said the DJs are shaman. The that's DJs you know, are considered shaman. So, so if you say in that light, but I want to ask you yeah. because you know we were talking with some of the other guests today. You know, yeah. tomorrow the Stargate opens 12, yes. 12, 12. Yes. Do you have any thoughts about that? I do. I think it's already been happening. I haven't been sleeping actually for three months because I'd just been so energized. So it was only a couple weeks where I actually got to sleep because I had so much creative energy, it just wouldn't stop. Even last night, I didn't sleep at all. Are you finding you have to eat or not eat as much? Oh, I or I, no, I, I eat. It eats the yeah. normal, okay, so it's just the sleeping. So I figured if there was a year to bring out this album, it was this year. And wow. it's coming out tomorrow. No, no, one more week. Next week. Okay. One more week. So between the Stargate opening and the end of the Mayan calendar, Exactly, right? at the right time. So, no, are you, are you doing any performances or anything like um, that coming up? An album release or anything like that? Not too many booked yet. Uh, it will be mostly, I'll be doing them at the electronic festivals. Okay. So is this like yeah. a circuit? They do one, don't they do one in festivals? Welland? Yeah. Don't they do a big electronic music in Welland? Maybe there's like there's so many of them and they're all over the world. Yeah. And uh, so I'll you hoping to travel around the world doing some of this too? Basically, yeah. yes. Ah. Where I mean, you're affecting fifteen thousand people at once. Yeah. How do you get on that bill? 
Uh, well, you got to meet the right people, and you send your demo, and then they get you there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, so we're looking forward to this next Tuesday. Um, now, where can people get their hands on it if they want you to? You can buy it online. Yeah. Uh, iTunes, Amazon, Sportify, all the online retailers. And in about another couple weeks, they can buy the hard copy. Now, do you have a website or something I with do. a link to all that stuff? Yes. They can go margrock33, M-A-R-G-R-O-C-33. Just like that. Music.com. You see? And they can, there's all the social media links, and they can follow me. And they can actually get a CD, like a hard copy they CD. They can get a CD in a couple weeks, yeah. yeah. Okay. But all, major online right now. All right. Yeah. Well, great. Great to wow. have you on the show Thank today. Thank you so Thanks much for, for having me. Thank you. And Thank we're going to put the, we're going to play that one song, hopefully time travel, right? It would either be time travel or I don't want to hear you say. Okay. And that's from this new album, That's from right? the new album. Cinderbella. Yeah, those are the faster tracks. Okay, good. Yeah. Looking forward Beautiful. to it. Wow. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Thank Barbara. you for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Best of luck in the new uh, Mayan calendar system. <laughs> the new Mayan calendar system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So do we start again like at, at one? Cause We're going to find out. Are we going to do... Are we going to do liquid lunch in the new year? We don't know yet. It's too early to tell. Well, if we're not here, we'll be in the other dimension. It'll be happening with somewhere. With the bees. Yes, we'll be with the bees. And you're going to have to eat nothing but honey. <laughs> we'll be able to make it ourselves. Okay, Sandra, thanks right. for doing this today. Awesome show. Yeah. As usual. And we'll see you next week for our big yes. Franco yes. last show of the year. Crossing the threshold. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow right here on thatchannel.com. Once again, I've overcome my fears. Once again, I've overcome what I To the moon and the sky I see In my heart and in my dreams All this time I knew it was real In my heart you could see it for real Never forget who you are Never forget who you are My bittersweet cold night Once again I've overcome my fears Once again
called the Wack. He leaves an eye break down. I pick me up. I head out of town to a booth in the tunnel restaurant. Waiting for my ribs and fries I pick up Joey on the side Think of you when it comes Cold slaw Side odor of cold slaw And we walked along the boardwalk And we were on Black Greta Garbo And the town hall clock we were always on display it's so magnificent I should have offered him a smack Instead I took the whack The whack, the whack, the whack The whack, the whack Riding through the rain The wipers beating double time and they don't dry my tears They don't wipe away my shame What's a girl to do Thinking of you with her It's raining in my heart And I'm so wild The whack, the whack The whack, the whack And we walked along the boardwalk and we were on black gritty gobble in the town hall clock and we were always on display so magnificent I should have offered him a smack should have took the whack in the whack 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 Thank you very much. That's called The Whack, and that's coming up on our EP that's coming up, we're recording right now with the Heavyweights Brass Band.